Hey, good evening everybody. We'll call the meeting to order and uh, welcome to the Design Advisory Panel meeting for November 25th. Um, to start by uh, introduction of late items. <laughs> Adoption of our agenda, I guess. Um, has everybody had a chance to see the package and read the agenda? Okay. Um, is there any changes or anything else that people want to add to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, um, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda with the addition? Uh, sorry, no. <laughs> motion to adopt, adopt the agenda. Yeah, we don't want pictures here. Not Kevin, actually, first. Kevin, okay, and a seconder? Tony, and all in favor? Great. So the first order of business is to do some minutes. We've got uh, the minutes from the October 28th, uh, 2001 meeting. That was our last meeting. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Yes, okay. Um, are there any changes or revisions to the minutes? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda or the minutes as presented? Uh, Kate, seconder. Second, Tony, I think you had your hand up before. Okay. Or Angela, sorry. <laughs> seconder, Angela, all in favor? Great. Okay. So we've got three presentations tonight. Um, the first one this evening is for 2545 Doctors Road. And uh, I understand that, um, uh, Angela Buick, are you wanting to step out for this particular um, pro development pro program? Yeah, I can step out if you'd like me to, or I can just uh, be present without speaking, or making any motion. It's a waiting room. A waiting room then. Whatever you prefer. Yeah, if okay. you don't want to vote, I think we'll just, we'll have you move to the waiting room for this one. Okay. So just for the record, if she can just uh, explain the, um, if there's a conflict, just to, to note that. Oh. Please, on, on the recording, so. Oh, you can just note that you have a conflict? Yeah, I have a conflict. Okay, so we'll put you in the waiting room yeah, we'll we'll after that one. And, okay. um, great. And Lainey Stevenson will um, introduce this particular project. Thank you. Development permit application number DP001238 is for a multifamily residential development with five units located at 2545 Doctors Road. The application was presented at the design advisory panel held on September 9th. At the meeting, the panel requested that the applicant return to present a revised landscape plan. The applicant has since incorporated the following changes into their design. A more robust landscape buffer with increased biodiversity and flowering species influenced by the surrounding neighborhood context. Extensions to the open decks above the front doors to provide weather protection and better defined building entrances. Defined pedestrian pathways with lighting. A seating area to the rear. More naturalized retaining wall materials. And a short-term bike storage. The applicant and her team are here tonight to present the revised landscape plan and highlight the changes. Okay, and who do I have from Russell McMahon Group who will be presenting? Is that you, Russ? Yeah, hi, good evening. Hi. I'm going to have uh, Jeff from Climate on my behalf to do the presentation. Okay, and he can then share a screen. Neighboring apartment complex 
Um, it is not uh, well defined. It doesn't have a well defined landscape. Uh, the site has no natural screening through the south adjacent lot. Uh, has native cedars, uh, fir, and alders providing some level of high separation. The site is bare of native trees other than three dead and down cedars, which need to be removed in the front of the property. Um, the landscape designing is often spaced through creating areas of vibrant and eye-catching vegetation, uh, various well position elevations, um, trying to capture the um, the views of Departure Bay, uh, which I'll show you. So as you can see, the lot is positioned uh, facing to the east, so the views of the structures actually are facing, uh, and the elevations um, accommodate views for each of the each of the structures. Landscape design, uh, which utilizes accommodation of trail resistant grasses, evergreen shrubs, natural stone, and colorful deciduous trees. This also intends to introduce a privacy buffer from Doctor's Road for the plant single residence, which is block three in this image. Um, the hedge of Leyland Cypress is utilized to, minim uh, to minimize the sight line to the east and create privacy and definition to the Doctor's Road property. So 
So as mentioned, um, uh, to have an area of interest in, in the back of the property. Um, so what we did was in the rear, uh, rear of block one, uh, we redefined it with a pathway to a timber pergola and sitting area. Um, the pergola uh, posts of have lighting and, and are wrapped in this area as well so that we can have climbing over top of the over top of that area for added, added vegetation. We've also moved the bike storage, or sorry, the short-term bike storage is, is into this area here as well. So we added this and moved this over from its, its original location. So that's, that's what we changed in the back as for the committee's recommendations. Uh, so there's four bike storage, uh, four bike, four bike storage in this area, uh, which gives us the visiting cyclists a convenient place to store their bikes. Uh, the bike storage is also lit in the back area. Uh, the building entrance way as well. Anybody, any of the panel members have questions for staff about this application now that it's returned? I don't have your images here. So, so any of the panel members have any questions for the staff? No? Okay. Um, let me start with maybe um, Kevin, maybe you'd like to respond to these changes. I, think, I believe you were at the initial uh, meeting for this project. You're on your mic. Maybe replacing the 
Japanese maple that's close to the weeping willow. But um, I don't know if there's anywhere else in the south where we can plant that. I don't think there's any, anywhere, but that's my only comment. Um, I think you seem to have addressed everything that was in the uh, in the list that was presented to me. So uh, I would say good job. And if you can add a, another Japanese black pine, that would be great. So thank you very much. Great, thanks, Kevin. Um, we'll go, to, go with Kate. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for returning. And I agree with what Kevin said. Yeah, thank you for your um, responses. You, you have um, responded to what we said, and, and, it, and it definitely improved the landscape. I do have one question, and it's about at the top of the driveway, you have an area that's just sort of like a blue chip or something. And I just kind of wondered, well, what? why that is what it is. Um, and my other question was about the location of the kind of communal pergola and just just I had the thought was the privacy of the the conflict between that kind of common area and the building. And so where I'm going with is would the pergola and common area be better at the top of the driveway? not right behind the building. Uh, and I just wondered if you might comment because you may have other constraints that weren't obvious to me um, in or rationale for your placement of the common pergola space. Yeah, Kate, um, the, the common space in the back area, the, uh, the blue chip area was your, your first question. So the blue chip area is actually because the property on the, on the right hand side of that, so if you're coming up, let me, let me just move this over a little bit. So when you're coming up here, there's actually an access road that goes into a property here. Okay. We, just have an image, we just have an image of that property. So that is a carry through of the driveway. So this is going to be an asphalt road coming up, and then it, it's, it's going to be, uh, it currently is a, a blue chip up here. So that was left for the access to the property to that side. And as far as the, uh, as far as the, Pergola goes, it was uh, it creates privacy in the back area for, for people to use that area. Um, it does have windows um, on the back side, which are, which are um, access, uh, or I guess not access, but um, to, in case of emergency, they, there is window wells there, so we will look at it um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the house side of the of the um, of the backyard area there, so that's why we couldn't move it over to that side was because we were very limited to space in between the <clears throat> the edging and and the uh, and the uh, structure, and we wanted to pr provide a green space back there with uh, with some flowering plants and whatnot as well. Um, so that's why we couldn't move it over to that area um, was just because of the because of the access there. Yeah, that's great. That's what I, was, I sort of was assuming that that yeah. access was probably that something you had to keep, and and, it, and I just had thought if it wasn't, I would you know yeah, be a better spot. But yeah, I think you have done what you can with the amount of space back there, and, and I appreciate the improvements that you have made. Um, I think it'll go a long way for your project. Great. And don't have, have any additional recommendations. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the questions. Great, thanks, Kate. Uh, Tony. Hi, I uh, I was at that uh, first presentation and uh, uh, really appreciate uh, the effort that you've uh, made to address uh, all of our concerns. I think you got a you know a really good looking project now, and uh, I certainly don't have any comments. I do have one small question though, and. Uh, it didn't come up last time, but um, you, it triggered when you, you said about the view. Um, it, it just occurred to me that those sort of the, the units on the interior side, the two, I don't know which, what's the name of the building, which block or anything, but the two rear buildings, the units on the, I, I guess on the non-view side, if you call it that, did you consider uh, flipping the, the plans uh, you know, side by side so that the balconies uh, would have a better view than uh, they do now, the rear, the rear units? Uh, 
Do you understand what I'm saying without looking at the drawings? Yeah, um, I do. Just, that's just a thought, not, you know, it's not a landscape thing. I, yeah. um, I believe that um, uh, they were trying to uh, capture the view of the decks are actually in a position where um, they will get kind of a peak of view peekaboo view because of the elevations, because the property is quite steep. Um, so every unit is actually quite a bit higher than the, um, like block between block three, the, the single unit yeah. and, and block one, they're actually quite elevated uh, between them, so they actually have a peekaboo view of uh, the pressure bay. So oh, fair enough. I mean, if you and the developer are satisfied that uh, you've taken full advantage of that, then uh, well, I said that was just a, a passing comment, but otherwise, uh, thank you for the excellent work that you've done uh, since you saw this first. Great. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tony. Um, Tyler. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, nothing really to add. Thanks for the applicants for coming back and uh, addressing the concerns and the efforts there. And uh, uh, everything, anything I would say that was already been said, so uh, thank you. Great. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Yes, and I'd like to add my thank you for your for coming back and also your patience. With <laughs> we tried to we tried to present at our last meeting and we had uh, we we're short of quorum, so we do appreciate your your effort there. And uh, um, I don't really have anything to add beyond what's already been said. So I think what we can do is uh, just have a quick look here. I think we probably only have one one recommendation that uh, Kevin wants to. Um, one Kevin suggested, adding some coniferous trees or the especially uh, black pine to the site. You want to make that a recommendation, Kevin? If if everybody else is on board on it, it, it just uh, I just feel that Japanese maple is almost being done to death in this town, and um, I, I just love uh, uh, like the Japanese black pine. I think would be a beautiful tree there, and and, and just having one tap the wheel on that one corner. I just don't think it's enough. And if everybody else agrees, uh, I would make that a recommendation. Okay. Thank you. So phrasing it, um, consider consider um, adding a black pine to. Do you want to specify the location or just? You no, know, just adding another black uh, black uh, Japanese black pine on the site. And there's very few spots I think that that can accommodate it, uh, unless they want to try to tuck it into the back somewhere. But. But uh, I would I would defer to to Kate's opinion on that uh, on that recommendation. And if she disagrees, I will remove it. Okay. Kate, Thank you. Want to weigh in there? Well, I I don't disagree, but I'm just wondering about being so specific um, with the species, and okay. I just wonder if we maybe we leave it just if there's opportunity to to increase the coniferous trees. Yeah. Uh, on the site that they should try to do so. Okay. Yeah, like said, there's Siberian spruce, there's a lot of different trees that, that don't even take up a lot of width on them and stuff, so. Yeah. Absolutely. So I agree. Yeah, we, like, I think it's there to not be. He heard you and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah add, add more can, coniferous trees to the site. Okay, so can we get somebody to. Uh, Put forward a motion to accept the landscape plan as presented with the one recommendation to add coniferous uh, trees within the site. Can I get uh, somebody to uh, uh, Tony? Uh, yes, Tony? Oh, I'd, I'd be happy to make a motion, but I'm, I'm just not uh, as up on the coniferous trees as uh, Kevin or um, <laughs> Kate. And I'd be and evergreen, evergreen trees, Tony. Evergreen. Uh, Whatever. Um, I, I, I'm a little nervous personally about uh, supporting such a, a recommendation. I mean, if it's just a, you know, consider this kind of a thing, then fine. But I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with that. As it. as it is. But you will vote for it if we leave the, the consider consider adding coniferous trees. Sure. There? Okay. Sure. So you're you're making the motion? Yes. Okay. Do we have a seconder for the motion? So so can you reread the motion, please? Okay. To accept the landscape plan as presented with the one recommendation, which is to consider increasing the number of coniferous trees on the site. How does that sound? 
I would second that motion. <laughs> okay. And Kevin seconded. All in favor? Yes? Okay. Great. It's passed. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate your presentation. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Okay. Okay. Move on to our second presentation for the evening. This is development permit um, for uh, two, 225 and 233 Nickel Street. And uh, it'll be presented by Lainey Stevenson. But uh, we also have um, Kate here. Are you, you're part of the presentation panel? Yes. Okay. Yes, so shall I leave? Well, what I'd like to propose um, is I'll leave that up to you and uh, I think Raymond, are you presenting on who's presenting on this one here? So through to Raymond DeBale, yeah. So um, if you you could either give your presentation to start. Um, sorry, that's what, yeah, that, that's probably. I would prefer to not do my like. Can I do my map? I think yeah, I think uh, okay. we had a lengthy discussion about this uh, last month about conflict of interest when people are, are presenting and I totally disagreed with with the outcome of it but I wish Lainey was still there because um, she made it sound that that uh, person in conflict which in this case would be Kate would do her presentation first then leave and I don't agree with it but I'm pretty sure that's what she said uh, she would prefer to have done so that she has no influence. Well, as chair, uh, I, I spoke to Lainey earlier and I, I was suggesting that perhaps we could do it a different model, that um, they can, the presenter can choose to, to do this a little bit differently. That Kate could um, present after, but she'd have to leave during the architectural presentation and then also leave during the discussion. So there'd be two. Okay, that, that's perfect. I, that, and I, I would going, love that. I was going to leave it up to the presenters uh, how they would prefer to handle it. So there's sort of two options. Kate, you could present now and then leave for the duration of the presentation, or Raymond could start off and then you can, you can leave for that and then you can come back for yours and then leave again. Yeah, I think given the, the scale of the project, it's better for the architect to go first to set the context in, of the project. And I can follow. Is that okay yeah. with you? Right and then all right. I may have a different opinion. I think we should really divorce landscape architecture from architecture. So um, I prefer actually that we go first, that she then has a chance to present, that she can go silent, and then you guys can have a discussion. Um, we'll get a couple minutes to uh, Drew as well. And then if you guys need her to answer any specific questions, then you can bring her back in. Yeah, so. I think it's fairly easy with the Zoom because we okay. just keep putting her in and out of the waiting room. Yeah. So. Okay. okay, so we're going to go ahead with... Um, so I don't have the glory. I'll just introduce that first. No, I think um, to Lainey, Lainey, has to give, Lainey has to present it. Actually, she, hasn't, yeah. she hasn't introduced okay. yet. So, okay. Go ahead, Lainey. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Development permit application number DP001245 is for mixed use development with 10 residential units and 287 meters squared of live workspace located at 225 and 233 Nickel Street. The applicant is requesting one variance for the front yard landscape buffer. The property is on DT12 Gateway and is designated urban node in the official community plan. It falls within development permit area 9. Uh, which is the commercial, industrial, institutional, multiple family, and mixed commercial residential development. The general permit, development permit area design guidelines and the South End Neighborhood Plan Urban Design Framework and Guidelines apply to the proposed development. And I believe Raymond uh, and his team is here to present today. Great. Okay, Raymond, you can go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, I will. Um, just first, I will uh, say I just introduce everybody. It's a great note. Um, first, uh, from our office, and this will be her first presentation as an intern, so be nice. Um, I got Kate here as well, and uh, she'll get a presentation. And then uh, Drew, if he needs to talk about it, he's kind of going, I think, with Mark. I'm not sure if he was involved correctly, but um, he's here if we have any questions. So I'll grab the screen. I'm demoted to the screen uh, by person. So. Can everybody see the screen or do you need permission to do that? No, or do yeah. I have to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
respectfully through the chair. Raymond, yeah. it is you have to share your screen. Oh, I have to share. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to find the spot on here. Where is it? It's the bottom in the center. Oh, the bottom in the center. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
you just let me know um, where you kind of want to go with the slides, otherwise we'll just go one after yeah. the other, I guess. Yeah, so we did have a few comments from the city. First one was to add additional wayfinding elements um, to help with, you know, directing visitors, especially to the local workiness. So we added some signage on the side of the building and um, also to help to demarcate the entrance to the rear local workiness. So we added canopies with more signage. Um, so I think yeah, that was a big way. And I don't know, remember there's another slide that shows the um, main entrance to the west side. Um, yes, I think yes, that one will be okay. So there was also another comment to um, add or consider additional materials and changes. Um, so we did continue the material straight through to the lobby and we added some exterior windows to further demarcate the entrance. Um, yeah, that is going to be it. Um, I mean, that's the side of where we need to be added more canopies and signage um, to help the visitors that we um, access through the exterior stand um, from the rear one-way lane to the parking. Um, yeah. Now that's the other um, the work we need with and more candy. Um Yes. Yeah. I just quickly go through a couple of slides again. Yeah. See anything more? Can we get the context? Yeah. Again, I'll uh, back in here. There's an extra little skinny left at the site that's not part of our project. You can see there's no opportunity to stop or drop off or anything like that. This is the rear of the alley. Um, again, the site's quite low and then it rises up right at the street level where the fence is. You can see the difference on the site there. You can see it here a little bit better. Actually, there's rock quite low to this um, soil here. So again, we're kind of restricted what we can do. And it's a challenging for civil to do with the stormwater. It just gives you an idea roughly of uh, the view out from this unit along the street frontage and then there's um there's the plan in here so this is the site plan cable talk a little bit about more we didn't ask for this to be a variance i think that's better interpretation i think whether it came for the city um, so this is the main entrance coming into the building here and then you have a way to walk around to the other ones these are kind of more lift work but they're more um casual you know maybe it's an artist or a writer or some other person there these ones are a little bit more commercial oriented because they have their main entrance um, and then this is the main entrance into the suite to go up by the elevator. So we're within about 11 square feet of what we're permitted to put on the site. And it's a little bit challenging to fit the parking on here. And these parking cells out here um, are basically for visitors to be able to come up without having to get inside the park gate because there is no access and it's a one way road or lane, which is really narrow. So. Of course, it can say way more. These just give you the main areas, and then they're open to below. So, and these are the units up above. So, these ones have nice views out to the ocean. Um, the site across the other side of the lane is a little bit lower than the permitted height. So, these will obviously have all these views, and that's just the idea of the entrance way elevation. So, won't take up any more of your time unless there's something you want to say, Carissa. Um, I guess maybe just a quick comment about because it's almost zero lot line on each side, and the, as the other lots get redeveloped, these could get covered over. So that's part of the reason why we set back the main parts of the living areas back from the stairwells. And then we just put some green screen so that at least the neighbors have an opportunity if they want to plant something on them to block. The concrete that will look and then we try to keep it as open as possible at the end because we don't know whether the other properties will develop rates the lane or not. So it just gives you an idea of the section of what's going on. This is the red is the, the, the uh, rock that's underneath the site right here. So and this is the, the grading of the site as it is right now. So it's a bit of a puzzle to uh, put that all together. So any other Comments, Clarissa? Huh? Um, no, I think that comes from pretty much. Okay. 
So I'll let Kate come back in and she can talk a bit more. You want Kate in now? Okay. Kate, I think you can go ahead with your portion. Hey, um, I got the screen if you want to see it. So. Oh, okay. Sure, you're trying. Sure, that would be great. Or you can add them in the comments. <laughs> uh, let's see. I can oh, go. Yeah. Oh. Now you can if you want. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, well, um, I'm trying to be brief. The, the concept of the landscape was um, kind of a reflection of responding to the South End neighborhood plan. So by trying to contribute to the evolution of Nickel Street into a high street for South Nanaimo. So this is realized with refined hardscaping, appropriately scaled street trees, uh, along Maple Street, situated in permeable planted edges to help accentuate the human scale and also provide some definition from public to semi-private. So that's the area there along Maple Street. Um, there are planter, planters with integrated seating um, that sort of embrace the whole development. Um, and also include uh, recess lighting. So we have that sort of current, that, yeah, the whole edge of the, that street level. Yeah, exactly where the hand is moving around. If I, if I, if so, I won't look the curse if you don't want me. No, you can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, and the plants, um, again, I, I'm utilizing a really layered approach. Um, so I'm maximizing uh, the amount of plant material on the small site that I can get in. And we're also um, sort of taking advantage of the, the different levels and having the, with the upper deck on the nickel, yeah, there, nickel street um, with a, a planted edge, sort of connecting the third floor down to the ground thing. And then also we're utilizing um, the edges of the parquet at the lower level and using green screens and planting um, to help uh, improve the laneway conditions of the building and soften the parking garage. And yeah, it's a very small site and we're trying to just sort of make the most of what we have and making it um, useful to all the residents. Um, yeah, so I think I'll leave it at that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm able to answer questions. <laughs> I don't know how it will work. Um, I think what we should do is probably have you leave and we'll we'll work on, uh, we'll, we'll start with um, some questions of the panel and if there's some specific for you, I guess we'll call you back in. Okay, I, I suppose I could make one comment. I, I realize we have not quite achieved the required buffer off of Nickel Street. Um, so I imagine that we will work with the city on um, how we treat that buffer and, and, and making sure that we don't need a barrier. Okay, so okay that's all I did today. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. So, Drew, is there anything that you needed to comment on that could be here? Or? Yeah, I'm Brandon. Thanks. I think from a stormwater perspective, this one is, I can keep it really brief. Um, this site is obviously fully occupied by the building. It also is upstream of a storm sewer that discharges directly to the ocean. So under the city's uh, engineering standards, uh, the only requirement is for um, to ensure that the capacity of the downstream mains um, are they have capacity to accommodate this flow and if they don't then we need to provide provide detention on the site so that's something that we would work through with the city during the detailed design as part of the building permit so i think that's about all i need to say thank you Sorry, Chair, may I just, uh, just to offer it for a procedure? Uh, Kate may stay in, in this portion of the meeting if there are questions for her. She may sit. Oh. She, she can stay in the meeting for that. Yeah, certainly if there's questions for the landscaping. Oh, okay. Do you want her to sit? We'll probably just start general questions. I suppose when it gets to the panel's deliberation, uh, that, that would be the time she could, could step out. 
Oh, okay. Um, that's fine. So, Thanks. Katie wants to stay in for the for the comments. Then? If, if there's questions to the, that's keeping professional. And then during the panel members' deliberations, um, that's when she would step right. up. Well, we won't know whether there's questions for the landscape until oh. we get to go through each person, right? Thank you. I'll leave it. Thank so, you. yeah. So she stays in or stays out. <laughs> Perhaps I could just suggest, uh, if, if uh, just to ask if there's any questions at this time for the landscaping. Oh, okay. So before, before Kate is Kate still in the meeting here? Yeah. Okay. So before Kate leaves, perhaps um, the panel members could consider any landscaping questions for her, and then we'll we'll do more general questions to, with everybody. Here. I, I have a question for staff regarding the landscape first. If I might, might. Sure, go ahead. And if, if we can get the applicant to uh, stop sharing yeah. the group screen. That would be helpful. Thank you. Can see everybody then? Thank you. Okay, good. So I have a question for, for Lainey. Uh, can you define um, what defines how this doesn't meet the, 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 the landscape variance or the landscape uh, treatment level? Does it have to be like a continuous landscape buffer? Or like yes. what? Because it looks like there's areas that meet the 1.8 meters and there's areas that don't. Mm -hmm. Does it all have to be 1.8 meters? Or I just want to know why uh, why there's a variance. Sure. Respectfully, through the chair, the way that uh, Part 17 of the zoning bylaw, which is the landscape section, is written, is that uh, it needs to be a continuous 1.8 meter buffer, broken only by pedestrian walkways or driveways. So the pedestrian walkways that are going through, those that's okay, um, but the, the walkways behind uh, wouldn't count towards the 1.8 meter buffer. It needs to be landscaped area. So it's, so it's only that one central section that meets it, that between the two entrances, is that correct? Uh, yes, I didn't. I did not get an exact measurement of how wide uh, those sections are, um, but to me, the plans look like uh, the entire section does not meet 1.8 meters. So maybe portions okay. of it, it may, uh, but the entire. Kate, you want to add something? Uh, no, actually that's wrong. Um, where it is at its widest is more than two meters. I think it's a bit of a contradiction when you're trying to create a commercial street scape and you're saying you have to have a continuous, essentially 1.8 meter variance because we want people to be able to flow in and out of that. So if, again, it's wide as it needs to be and a little bit wider in case that. But um, that's why I say I'm a little bit confused why it came up as a variance. So. Yeah, re respectfully, through the chair, uh, it's a 1.8 meter buffer and it can be broken by pedestrian walkways through the buffer. So that part is okay. It's the pedest or the area behind. That's the issue that minimizes the 1.8 meter buffer. However, if, if Kate is saying that it is uh, two meters, then if it's identified on the plan, uh, then a variance would, would not be required. Okay, so it sounds, it sounds like something that maybe uh, Kate needs to work out with the staff and just verify. Maybe we just add some dimensions to clarify. Yeah, yeah and I mean, the design was trying to um, make it as pedestrian friendly, um, but without really realizing I needed it to be continuous, and it's very easy to make that adjustment. Okay. Okay, so um, are there any other questions of Kate on the landscape design for now? I'm just, maybe just throw that up to Kevin. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chair, Ms. Ms. Chair. Um, yeah, Kate, uh, I, I really like your concept, and I really like your hardscape concept with the front, and, and, and especially the use of materials. Um, and I like how you staggered that, that front, uh, the front landscape areas. Um, I think it creates much more of a plaza area. I really like it. And the only thing I'm questioning is, um, the four street trees that you've chosen, two of, of, of uh, the tulip tree and the bark maple, mm -hmm. both of them seem to be trees that would bloom more in the spring. Is that correct? Even though the 
the tulip tree might be a little bit later in spring. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just questioning whether or not the two outer trees, instead of using the tulip trees, whether you consider trees that might flower later in the summer, like uh, like right now, it, it, with the way the global warming is going, we have a silk tree, a, a Serbian silk tree, mm -hmm. and it, it starts flowering in, in late summer, and it's, there's still flowers in October, and it's a very, you know, it, I think with even, even a pause area like this, that would probably stunt its growth a bit, so it can be quite a rest in its growth, whether or not you may consider it a tree that might flower a little bit later in the year compared, compared to the, uh, the bark maples. Um, I'm always open for suggestions. Uh, I'm not sure. The silk tree, I believe, may not have the longevity uh, that we may look for in a tree, but I, I'm always open for suggestions, and um, I do try to be thoughtful about what I choose and the reasoning behind it. Yeah, the only reason I mention it is uh, we planted ours in our backyard on our northwest corner, and it basically all it gets is western sun. And this last year it grew like crazy, and and it flowered for like two months, and, and it, it was just a beautiful tree. And and uh, I think uh, having trees like that hang for the corner might be something to consider. I'm not making it a recommendation. I'm just putting it out there because uh, I. I I, I'm just seeing all these trees that, like, uh, like the Japanese maple and the ironwood, and all these trees that we're seeing right regularly on our on our pallets, and, and and I'm trying to look at trying to see some different trees in our city, and and there's a lot of trees now because of, of the way global warming is that that can really grow in 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 the summer now, and and, and so I'm just mentioning that, just recommending it because I appreciate you and. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I think what I'll do is just go through the panel members and they can just, if they have any more comments for Kate specifically, and then we'll go back and do a round um, for the, the building, the project as a whole, uh, if that sounds okay. Uh, maybe, Tony, if you have anything you'd like to add on the landscape issue. No, I like it as it is. Thank you. Okay. Tyler, how about you? Uh, no, no, Chair, thanks for the presentation. And that's no, I like the project landscaping, everything, all good, so thanks. Okay, and Angela? Thank you, thank you for the presentation. Um, oh, I think it's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I think that. Thank you for having too much influence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd have to weigh in and, and say yes. I, I like I like the way you manage the landscape in a sort of difficult situation. There's not much to work with there, and you've done. Uh, I think it'll be a really um, nice outdoor space there that you've created. So thank you. Okay, so I think we can go back and, and sort of look at the project as a whole and have the committee um, comment on that. Is there any questions of staff you want to ask about the the project as a whole? Nobody's got anything. Okay. So um, let's see. How about we go, um, Tony? If you'd like to start, do we have to have uh, Kate, Kate log in? Okay. So Tony. Yeah, I'm just unmuting here. Okay. Full screen gallery. I lost my lost my gallery there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I, uh, I think this is an excellent project. And I'm totally supportive of it. Uh, I'm a former character, uh, starting just with the fact that uh, it's a nice, um, it's a nice mixed use. Uh, the, the, the units look uh, very interesting. That's kind of something you don't see everywhere, especially something with two-story high space inside and that kind of thing. Um, uh, the design is uh, a nice, clean, crisp lines to it. I like the contemporary colors. I think this uh, is going to be a very positive insertion to poor old Nickel Street. And I think it's a really good precedent for, 
for future uh, developments going to be no doubt coming around it. So um, excellent job and uh, thank you for that. Great. Thanks, Tony. Um, Angela, would you like to make your comments about the project as a whole? Thank you, and uh, thank you everybody for your presentation. Um, like uh, Echo and Tony, um, wonderful project. Um, love the scale, the tricky uh, site in terms of size and access. Um, I love how the uh, deck, amenity decks are at a human scale, so it's connected to the street. Um, tricky to integrate green space, but keeps them with the job. And I know it's tricky to try and meet the guidelines all the time and uh, being very specific along the road, but um, uh, it makes sense sometimes to, to move those uh, numbers around a little bit to, to make the site function better. Um, and I don't really have anything to, to add. Um, Aside from possibly some kind of art installation, um, it's, um, I think the project itself is a bit of an art piece. <laughs> um, I think it will be a, a, a nice example for a future project. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Angela. Okay. So if I could interrupt or make a comment, the area that we showed is the logo on the front facade. That's where we see maybe something could be more artsy on there. So. Yeah, something two-dimensional. Sounds good. Hey, Clara, so you can speak up in a meal one, so I don't have to answer those questions. So. Okay, Kevin. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with pretty much everything. I, I like Angela's comment about getting uh, some sort of public artwork. Uh, with that plaza area there, uh, there might be even more opportunities to do something with that. Um, I, one question I have is the large deck, I think it's on the third floor, that is accessible by Unit A, is that correct? Because on the floor plan it shows only windows and there's no sort of doors going out to it. And they show planters and stuff on the deck, so if either Raymond or someone can respond to that. Um, no, there will definitely be access on the, um, the third story um, through of unit um, type A. So that unit type A will have the entire deck pretty much um, for okay. the motor stuff. Yeah. yeah, okay, sorry, because when I look at the floor plan, it looks like all the all the openings there were, looked like there were windows and there was no doors. So you just wanted to check that, which makes sense. So that's going to be a really nice unit. Um, aside from that, I know staff made comments about the uh, the color and texture on the north and south elevations, and um, I, I I disagree, and I'm not sure. But actually, I don't necessarily disagree with their comment that it, 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 there's basically the, the wood tone and the dark tone, but. The dark tone is really important to that side because it comes around into the front and the back and creates those bands, those thin bands on the front. And I'm not sure how you could ever address that without introducing another color or texture to, to separate the wood from that dark color. So um, I'm going to have to disagree with that comment on that. So I, I, I'm okay with the north and south elevations because I feel that dark color really needs to come around into that front, into the thin frames that frame the whole front. So um, I think um, uh, Raymond and your staff, you did a real good job with the, the farm and character deciding. Um, we're going to see a lot more of these projects along uh, Nickel and Halliburton because of the slope of the sites because they have lane access. We're able to get underground parking, and um, uh, thankfully, it's taken many years. Like I've been on this panel for 20 years, and we've seen so many projects come come towards our panel, and very few of them go forward. And now we're finally seeing them come forward, and and so projects like this are just going to totally 
rejuvenate uh, the South End and more and more people are going to come forward and more and more than are going to go through and we're going to see great projects like this. So thank you very much. Nice job. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Tyler. Um, yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Nothing to add other than just overall uh, fully support the project uh, as presented. And I think it's great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tyler. Okay. Yes, I have to agree with concur with everybody there. I don't really have anything to add. I, I concur with Kevin on on the sort of design of the, of the north and south. I think also Raymond mentioned, of course, eventually that's going to be built up along there, so it'll be less. Those sides will be less visible, and so I don't. I, I think at this point it, it looks looks about right to me as well. I really like how you handle the building on the site. Um, managed to provide parking, visitor parking, and, and the parking for the residents, so that, that's all really great. Um, the only question I had was, um, I see that you have the parking lot partition, so that there's the visitors, and then there, it said there was going to be a security gate that comes down. I'm um, just wondering how you're going to handle a situation like a handicapped person. Um, initially, I was a little worried about that because you can't pull up and drop somebody off at the front. But then I also realized that you do have an elevator, so I'm assuming that you'll make that elevator accessible to somebody if they're coming in and yeah. working in your handicap spot. Is that correct? Yeah, it's going to be a automatic control as a panel to do that, so people call in. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. No, no, really good project. Really like like uh, uh, I think it's going to really sort of set set a precedent on that street and um, start opening it up. Um, and it's nice to see buildings that are now facing the, the street and not having a fence blocking off the, the view and being closed off by that. So, great. Thank you very yeah. much. And thanks, Clarissa. Clarissa, for your first presentation, Jess. Well done. Thank you. So, um, like Kevin, I'm kind of excited to see how this is different because when I first moved in, and I'm about 32 years ago, I was on the street near the old fire hall where I had a lot and uh, our jelly below and my wife was a jeweler, so, and we lived above, so it's, it's taken a long time for it to change a lot there, so hopefully we've got some exciting projects in the future. Well, I think at least... There's a lot of, there's a lot of interest right now. We've got like three other projects on Halliburton in the works right now. That's so. great, yeah, good. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if I'm hearing any recommendations here other than perhaps to consider some artwork. On the, on the facade or at the, the front of the building, is that correct? If Angela and Kevin, I think you both um, brought that up. Are you, are you wanting it as a recommendation or are you just uh, a point of comment here? I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, um, Jared. Okay, how about you, Angela? Yeah, same, just, a, just an idea, just a thought. Okay, well then can I just have a motion then to accept the development plan as presented? Which is no I'll motion. make that motion. Okay. Do we have any variances for this? I'm trying to. Yes, we do. The landscape treatment level on the ground. Possibly, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I would make a motion to accept the application as presented with support for the landscape treatment level variance uh, as presented. Sounds perfect. I'll second that. <laughs> okay. Who's seconding? Tony? Yeah. Okay. Great. And all in favor? Well, I think that's it. Thank you very much, people. Thanks for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're moving on to our third presentation for this evening, and this one here concerns property on Jingle Pop Road, and Caleb Horn will do the presentation uh, introduction. And I think we've got Kate back in the room. Good, okay. Great, thank you. Um, yes, this item on tonight's agenda is development permit um, 1244 at uh, the property address 4101 and 4125 Jingle Pot Road. The proposed development is an a multi-tenant industrial uh, project with two buildings and a total floor area of uh, over 5,800 square meters and up to 15 industrial units. The subject property is zoned I-2, light industrial, and the relevant design guidelines are the general development permit area design guidelines. Uh, no variances have been requested as part of this development permit. Okay. And who do we have here who's going to present today? I'm, I'm the architect. This is Brian Kapansky. Oh, okay, Brian. Um, you can go ahead and uh, 
proceed and share your screen. Thanks. All right. Uh, is my screen being shared? All right. Yep. Yes. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with me this evening is uh, Ryan Cohen, our client, and uh, Chris and Jack, our landscape architect, who will be available for questions at the end. Uh, the, the just general overview, as, uh, as we've mentioned, the building is two multi-tenant industrial buildings with 15 CRUs in total, um, based on or going from 227 square meters to 611 square meters. So our goal was to create a variety of different sizes. Uh, the um, four of the units have mezzanines, which are these gray boxes here, and 11 of the units have a lower floor underneath the main industrial area. Uh, the site is L-shaped, and we're reserving this part of the property for phase two, which isn't part of our current development permit. Uh, part of the arrangement with this, the agreement with the city is this low band extension, so this is a new road that is being cut through these properties. Uh, in terms of the grading, the, the site's very sloped. And down here is the low point of the property, so we go up Jingle Bob Road or up Bowman. But the important part of here that we've made of the property is this low point. There are three very significant existing trees that we're retaining. Uh, they're very large. They're approximately 900 to 1.2 meters in uh, diameter at the base. So once the road dedication is is going through, these trees will actually be on city property. So what we've been trying to do is, is um, do this development without any retaining walls at all. And I think if you're familiar with the site, you know that right now there's some very large retaining walls right on the property line. And this design is meant just to get rid of those retaining walls completely. So as the grades go down and the lower floors start to show up on the uh, on, the, on these 10 units. So we've got one small retaining wall that we've ended up with in the back here that is approximately 600 millimeters high. We just weren't, we weren't able to manipulate the grades enough to completely get rid of it. We will have three sort of cup-shaped retaining walls around these large-scale trees that we're keeping, and those are to accommodate our pipe path and uh, the other landscaping that we're adding around it. So on, on Boban and Jingle Plot, there is the roadway, there's a flex lane, a bike lane, and a sidewalk. So what we've done at these three major trees is bring the sidewalk out into a flex lane and, uh, and to retain the trees. That's the goal here. So regarding the, the site, we've got the focal point here is the low point where all the driveway, or sorry, all the sidewalks come together. And we've created a, uh, a tenant's, a, a gazebo, a common area for the tenant's use. Underneath building D is also a bike storage area with showers, uh, secure bike storage, and possibly a bike repair station. And you can ride right into that bike, bike room from the, uh, the sidewalks. We've also got the recycling and garbage enclosure central to the property. And we've got sidewalks around along the face of all buildings on both sides. So every tenant space has a front and a back door, and uh, they're all interconnected by the perimeter sidewalks around the property. Like circulation, all the parking and driveways are located back. Uh, we have one shared driveway here that is part of an earlier agreement with the city, so this will be shared driveway with this property and this. So uh, we're also able to come out onto the bullpen extension, so it's a complete drive around is the idea. We also got all the required loading and, um, and parking spots on, on the property, none are underground, they're all surface, and uh, they're located on the back side of the property away from the streets. So along the front street is the office component of the industrial units, uh, the ones that are not as means. So these would be the lower floors, and they each have their own sidewalk up the street and a connectivity with the street. Very briefly here, what we this this is about showing what we've not done to the grading. So the existing grade is the red line, and uh, the only place we've manipulated it is, is at the front, as I mentioned, where we get rid of the large retaining walls and uh, replace it with a a, a commercial facade. So 
so building designs are uh, they're meant to be um, similar to each other, but not exactly the same. And the roof line steps down as we come down the hill in both directions. Uh, so the um, industrial part of the building, the upper floor in this case, hoping you can see my cursor, is actually a single height or double height space, but it is one floor. And uh, it's on with the basement or the lower level down here, also a single height space. So on this elevation, for instance, these are the lower levels. And once we get up to the higher end buildings, now we're into a mezzanine facade, so the lower level is gone. The materials of the building, here. Um, lastly, this elevation here is the is um, cast in place regulates into the tilt-up concrete paths is our goal. So we've done this a few times now. It's uh, it's really it looks really good. It um, it can look like fractured rock if it's done properly, but it is the a very large side of an industrial building, and I think we've, other than poking windows into it, which we'd like to avoid in this particular instance, uh, this is the facade treatment we're going with. Uh, the materials on the building, it's predominantly a, a concrete building, so it's tilt up for the most part, and we're using a little bit of precast elements on the front of it in order to get some, some play in the facade, because the tilt up facade is very flat. So we can make it flat with a little bit of texture, but by adding this piece of precast to the front and the overhang canopies, we start to get some three-dimensionality to the facade. We tried to go with a really gray, uh, black, and a little bit of blue look to it, and uh, what we're, we had a lot of discussion on bright colors on the project, and what we've decided to do is try and leave the colors to the tenants um, if, if they decide to deviate from the standard palette. But uh, one of the staff comments was to try and make the colors a little bit more exciting, and we're certainly open to that. We had reviewed some of that earlier. The repeated elements on the facades are the storefront configurations, the canopies, the punched windows, colored panels, and we've got a signage program for the entire project. Uh, we won't have a pylon sign on this project. All the signage will be on the buildings. just to show how the facade step back and forth. And the landscape plan here, and I'll briefly walk through it. Chris is with us, but uh, he will be available to answer questions you know, if need be. So the per entire perimeter of the site is, is uh, planted. We've, we've, kept the, we've created a buffer for the entire perimeter. Uh, we've got planted rain gardens along Oban and Jingle Pop Road to to deal with some of the stormwater overflow, but for the most part, the stormwater and all the civil are, are piped on this project. Uh, Chris has the focal point as the pergola, this generous planting in that area, and uh, screening around the recycling enclosure. Staff comments were um, a connected pedestrian network throughout the property, and I believe that we've pretty much got that. We've got sidewalks front and back of all buildings, and everything connects to the center pergola. We were asked to look at the um, opportunities on some of the big two-story walls, and uh, we, we will revisit our 3D graphics in the tilt -up. I think there's some exciting opportunities there. And uh, as I mentioned, some alternating more exciting colors. And lastly, the uh, rooftop screening, where we have a metal louver detail that we like to use on most of our projects. Um, very straightforward, it's only a uh, maybe 1.2 meters high and uh, dark in color. That concludes my presentation and uh, we're open to questions. Did you have a landscape um, presentation No. No. Uh, Chris uh, is available to present it if you would like. Yeah, I'm happy to speak to the landscape just a little bit um, and flesh it out just a, a touch. So um, obviously this is an industrial site. Uh, the landscape design responds generally to the building layout uh, as well as the site program. You know, we have a lot of space given over to the buildings themselves as well as circulation and parking, but we have been left with a good amount of uh, area around the site perimeter uh, and at the building entrances where we can really focus on enhancing the landscape. 
as Brian mentioned, the main landscape amenity on the site is the Hardscape Plaza and seating area. Uh, it's located at the corner of Bowen and Jingle Pot, uh, it's the west corner of the site. So in this area provides a, a variety of seating options and is, is for both uh, employees or users of the site um, as well as uh, supporting carryover foot traffic from the closely connected sidewalks if people um, are popping in to take a break or you know that kind of thing. Um, serving the, the bike lane uh, and, and providing uh, a public seating uh, if, if necessary. Um, uh, in that area, we have a pergola uh, providing partial shade and we have uh, bench seating um, and uh, the, the pergola itself will provide shade obviously as a structure but will also support the growth of twining vines uh, from the adjacent planting bed. Um, the, the Jingle Pot Road frontage, Brian mentioned the rain garden, so we do have a series of rain gardens set between the building unit entries, and we have them uh, currently collecting rainwater runoff uh, and allowing for enhanced stormwater infiltration in that area. We don't have a, a huge amount of opportunity um, for uh, rain gardens and, and just enhancing infiltration on site, uh, but that is one of the areas where we're able to do it, so we've, we've really taken that, uh, taken that, um, that effort. Uh, all of the rain gardens on the site uh, feature saturation adapted trees as well, um, and that kind of goes into the plant palette for the project. So entirely composed of native and adapted species, uh, and we place uh, an emphasis on drought tolerance and ease of maintenance, as well as uh, them all being selected for, uh, for not only regional uh, adaptiveness, uh, but also site adaptive, so uh, located within the microclimates of the site uh, where they will do the best and be able to provide the most impact um, with the with this relatively small amount of space that we've been, that we've been left with. Um, so we also have uh, the removal of four trees on the site uh, and then eight trees just off the property line uh, at the southeast corner. Um, Brian also mentioned the three most significant trees uh, which are being retained at the southwest corner of the site. And these are of key importance and we really feel they anchor the, um, that corner of the site and, and provide a, quite a significant um, landmark and, and kind of viewpoint uh, or point of view uh, for the site there. And, and they work to enhance the, uh, the area of um, common amenity that, that we've created in that spot. Uh, we've also done our best to get trees in around the perimeter of the site where we are more limited by soil volume, but um, have spaced trees uh, in such a way that they will be able to get adequate root volume um, and still thrive uh, even given the, the uh, narrower planting beds that they may be able to grow in. Uh, overall, on the site, including phase two, which is not part of this DP, um, but the, the plant number I have is for both phases. Uh, we have 62 new trees proposed across the two phases on the site. Um, and given the, the small number of trees coming out and the size of the site, we are really uh, significantly increasing the urban tree canopy, which is definitely worth noting uh, on this project. Um, happy to answer any landscape questions, and thank you for your time. Madam Chairman, if I might just add one more comment in addition to Brian and Chris. Sure. We've taken staff's comments on board about the large blank faces on the north side of Building B and the west side of Building A. And it's noted, very small, but it is noted in the landscape plan that we would like to put some form of creeper wall up both of those faces. At the moment we put Virginia creeper, but we'll work with Chris to find something that's a bit more suitable for that location. Okay, thanks. Well, that's your presentation. Um, let's see if any of the panel members have questions for staff on this project. Okay, don't see any. So, um, let's start with uh, Tony. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the presentation. Um, my opinion, this project, uh, succeeds on so many levels, I don't really know where to start. Um, I think the design team has done a, a, a really creative job on this extremely challenging site. I've rarely seen the site so weirdly shaped in plan, but also sloping uh, on, you know, to complicate it even further. I think the, 
you know, the dramatic uh, shape of the overall buildings and the uh, interesting variety of tenant spaces that, that uh, results from that is, uh, is, is going to be very exciting. Um, there's an obvious thing like retaining those large trees is, is uh, a great uh, asset uh, and uh, is to be commended. Uh, and um, in conjunction with that, that corner focal space, the amenity with the uh, uh, bicycle facilities and so forth, so I think it could be a, quite a dynamic little um, spot for the people that, uh, that are going to be working here. Um, having worked on a lot of built up concrete buildings myself, I know the limitations of that uh, particular uh, methodology and uh, I think you've gone well beyond rising to the challenge of those limitations and done a very creative job uh, on the exterior. I particularly like those blank walls where you referred to with the uh, reveals and so forth. I think uh, in the scale of this project and its location, <clears throat> Uh, I think they will be extremely uh, dramatic, um, you know, interesting uh, uh, additions to the, the, the particular streetscapes. Um, I like the landscaping and the continuity of the pedestrian networks all around the site. I think that's extremely well done and uh, well connected. Um, I like the colors that you've used. Uh, there's uh, enough variety for the size of this building, uh, given that it's uh, you know, massing uh, articulation, uh, yet within a restrained palette. So I, I think that's quite sophisticated and uh, it be very successful. And I, I hope people don't throw out their own personal garish individual storefronts or something like that to, to kind of uh, negate that. Anyway, um, I'll stop there just uh, with my compliments to the design team. And uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, Angela. Um, of course, um, I to echo everything Tony said. Um, um, it is a challenging site. Um, I actually run past there on a regular basis, so I kind of know the site really well. Uh, so I do appreciate very much that there is going to be the bike lane and the multi use lane. And it's down there that, I, um, that the, the site will be lighted as well. Um, currently it's very dark when, there's, when it's not sunny out. Um, and it's actually a pretty dangerous um, corner if you're a pedestrian trying to cross over from Jingle Pile to Old Down. There's nowhere really to cross and there's quite a bit of traffic through there actually uh, in the morning. Um, um, yeah, the only um, sort of comment about sticking with the um, design guidelines is the, uh, as I have here, um, this type of corridor is intended to um, sort of be uh, consistent with other projects that are happening in the area. and. There's that residential development that's happening just across the street, almost, which has a lot of um, post and beam uh, elements and cedar shingles. So it's quite a different project altogether. It's a very stark contrast to these two projects. And so I thought, well, maybe, um, maybe there's an opportunity to just add some natural elements into the facades. Um, if there's a possibility for that. So. Otherwise, um, I think it's a great project, and I love that the project is coming down to the street level for pedestrian connection. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Uh, Tyler. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, it thanks the applicants for a very thorough presentation. Um, and I'm just, yeah, echo uh, really what Tony said. I think it's, uh, you never know what you're going to get with industrial projects, but it's, uh, this one really hit it out of the park. I think really well done, and um, I'm happy to accept uh, presented. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tyler. Uh, Kevin? 
Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I would echo pretty much everything that's been said so far. Uh, I drive by this site quite a bit because my dad lives uh, a little bit further towards downtown on Jingle Pot, and there's such a mix of, of what's going on. There's there's residential subdivisions, there's multifamily, there's heavy industrial, there's light industrial, there's commercial, there's every little bit of everything there. And trying to get something like this to blend together is obviously a real challenge. And um, I think Angela made a pretty good comment if there's any way that you could add some sort of material that might sort of blend the project a little bit more with a uh, little bit less light industrial, a little bit more towards the commercial or residential end uh, could could be something to add. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, Brian, how to add that. I, I, I've always respected you. You're one of my favorites. Even though, like me, you both, both of us need a haircut. But um, uh, I like how you cited the buildings along the street edge. I like how you left the corner open and let that Chris do his thing on the corner. Um, the street presence is really good. Um, at any time, did you, Brian, did you think about um, to make these more individualized, or was the, the scope that you would really want to go with the same theme? Uh, with with the materials and colors to, towards the, the whole front. We were trying we were trying to do it as a as a whole development. So the whole, the, the whole thing was kind of the same, reusing the same elements on each one. Okay, yeah, and that's what I thought. And and there's nothing wrong with that. And and obviously the the units are going to have their own signage. And and I'm not sure how the the project's going to deal with the signage. It's going to be uh, rear, rear wall mount signage or whatever, but they will they, they will be individualized on the street edge, but obviously along the the back edge where they have to drive into it is, is almost as, as important. So obviously they're going to, they're going to have to deal with that for people that are driving into it because that's the only way they're going to get into it really. So. Um, other than that, I think uh, I think you did a great job with the site. I think uh, I think you must have worked really well with the city staff to create that low band extension because uh, the site that's in behind you is even bigger than these, these two sites. So um, obviously, there's a great opportunity there to, to turn all this into a much more light industrial site, commercial site. Uh, this, the tree restoration, everything that you did with the project, I, I think it's really, really, really polished. So uh, that's all I can say. Is there's really nothing that I could um, say that I would recommend about the project other than possibly trying to give it, try to add some some material possibly that might be able to blend it a little bit more down into uh, uh, like the, the tile store and, and areas like that that have a little bit more stone and stuff like that. But, um, that's pretty well it. I think it, it, this is a great project. This is really what Chris Chris Corner. I remember years ago that the, the upper half of Jingle Pop a small little project that uh, contained a couple of uh, detached buildings and it, it didn't really really connect down to what's below uh, to both down. And uh, I, I would just say that this is really what we need on this corner and I think it's going to be really successful. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Kate. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. I really don't have a lot to add. I, I think you've done an excellent job in citing the buildings and programming of the site and movements of all different levels throughout the site. And I think it's going to be an excellent building transition from sort of between some of the residential and more industrial-ish uses. And I really like that your um, color palette and material palette is a little um, softer or understated or not as bold as some of the projects we've been seeing. I think um, that's a nice change um, to see the softer color palette. And I guess the only thing I would say is I actually don't agree with Angela and Kevin on the trying to add an element that would integrate it with some of the other architecture. I think 
the beauty of these kind of sites is that there there can be a little bit of difference, and and I think because of the understated nature of your color palette and material, oh, understated name is the right word, but um, that I think it fits well because of that as a transitional kind of space and. Yes, and I, I really appreciate too that you were able to retain a few of those large trees. As a landscape architect, it's always hard <laughs> to convince developers and architects to save them. And I think you, that's part of the history of the site, and it's nice to see that you were able to keep them. And I actually love when bikeways and sidewalks can move around the trees, it makes their presence even more important. <laughs> And yeah, so I have nothing, I have no recommendations. I, I like it as it is, and you've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Well, last but not least, I think I'll echo everybody else here. Um, great project, and um, I have to agree with Kate on the, um, the fact that I, I don't know that I'd change the building at all. I think I think you're dealing with a, a situation where you have a you have a border between industrial and residential, and I think. This project's actually kind of creating a wall in that corner. Um, right now, it looks like a wasteland down there, but I think this is going to give us some personality. The trees, the added trees, and the retention of trees, the bike paths, all of that add an element to sort of humanize it more and make the transition then across the street to the more residential. I don't, I don't think you can kind of, you can't get totally away from that, no matter what you do. So I don't know about, I don't think I agree with Adam. You know, timber elements and that sort of thing to to this building. I think it's got its own statement, and I think you you're on your way to uh, building a really interesting and exciting uh, development, industrial de development uh, in the heart of uh, Nanaimo. There, so uh, good work. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So to summarize, do we have any recommendations for these for this group here? Kevin's shaking no. Angela, so you're you're okay. You're not you're not too worried about adding a recommendation. Mine was just mine was sorry, Madam Chair. Mine was just a comment more than anything. Uh, it, it's, it's such an almost impossible challenge to try to blend a uh, single family residential through to light industrial, heavy industrial, and down through commercial and, and other areas. It, it it would be an impossible challenge. I, I, I wouldn't know what to recommend for that. So. Uh, it, it was just a comment for me. Right. Was there, there was no variances on this, right? Well, um, is everybody agreeable to uh, making a motion to accept the presentation as as presented? Um, I will make that recommendation to accept the application as presented. So Kevin will accept mm -hmm. Makes the motion. Sure. Tony seconding. Everybody in favor? Great. Okay. All in favor? I think you passed the test. <laughs> thanks very much for your presentation. Good work. Good, thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so let's see. Before we adjourn, we've got a couple other, uh, got some other business here to attend to. So first of all, um, we, who's going to present? Are you going to talk about the uh, number eight council appointment to the advisory? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is an update to the panel members. Um, at our uh, council meeting, uh, on the November 15th, we, um, our council appointed a new member to the panel and reappointed a member. So um, in terms of our two architects on the panel, Tony James has been reappointed for another two-year term. So, <laughs> and we certainly have appreciated your contributions so far. Um, and also, uh, new member Jason Santafor. He has also been appointed as our second architect, um, and uh, and this is replacing uh, Charles, who has um, had an extended term to to assist us. Uh, we were hoping he could be here tonight to uh, so we could as a group thank him a little bit semi publicly, but uh, we certainly are following up with him uh, separately. But uh, thank him for his his all of his uh, time. And uh, we are going to welcome Jason, hopefully, to join our next meeting on December 9th. Yes, so the and that's the last one before Christmas. The last one before Christmas, yeah. Uh, one, one more meeting before Christmas. That's um, right. Yeah, so that's too bad about, yeah, Tony and Harold. Uh, so, we won't see, so we won't see Charles anymore, is that correct? We may see him on the Yeah. Uh, you, you, we may see him on the Okay. 
to be to be determined. Uh, I'm sure we may see him on the ninth. So uh, I think you know certainly as Christmas gets closer and people check their schedules, we'll see um, where we're at if, he, if he's able to even join us to say uh, goodbye. Uh, so right. Yes, that's too bad. Thank yeah, because he wasn't able to make this evening, and that's that would have been nice to say goodbye to him. But we'll see. Maybe the next meeting we'll have that chance. Okay. And I had one 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 other item. Sorry. Somebody wanted to say something? If I can just jump in with some other business, like that, but I can, unless uh, Madam Chair has anything to add. I have one more one more item, and then you can go with Kevin. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, staff has just asked me to remind you, uh, and remind everybody in the panel, um, that our panel packages are always sent out uh, the week before the meetings, usually on Thursday, but sometimes Friday. Um, we really want to encourage you that if you don't receive these, please do contact the staff so that we can get it to you as soon as possible. Don't worry about the weekend, I think is correct, right? Just let them know, email, okay? Um, also, the 2022 calendar of scheduled meetings will be coming out soon. And when they send it to you, please do put those in your calendar so that you remember and save those days um, so we can keep quorum. Um, it's really helping out. We got some new members. It's great. <laughs> for a while, there was a lot of pressure for a, bunch, for a number of us. <laughs> When to, to get quorum, so uh, this is good, but uh, it's great when everybody can make it and we get all your all your feedback in these in these meetings. So uh, those were my that was my point of business. Um, Kevin, you may go ahead. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. I would just like to say that uh, over these last two weeks, that uh, uh, Murray has done a brilliant job as chair, and obviously we need a chair and. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I would love to make a motion to uh, uh, make a motion to offer the position of Marie to be our new chair uh, for the future, and I would love to have a seconder for that. Does Marie get a? I'll second it. Does Marie get an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> what well, how does Marie one? feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> how does Marie feel about that? I think we all like to see her continue. <laughs> well, was it no, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. No, I realize it's a, it's a bit of a, a stickler. Um, I was, and um, Charles was asking me, I was, there was a little confusion about this meeting because I was saying, well, I want to be third in the line, like Kevin should be next. And um, <laughs> I know I was getting pushed this. But I've like, done it for like 15 years, Marie, so yeah. somebody else should do it. Yes, and I realized with COVID and that, um, after my first meeting here, I realized it's really important that somebody be in the room, um, that the chair be here, because we're not, you're not in control of the tech part of it, too, and, and uh, it helps to have that ability to consult with people here on this end. So um, I will accept for now. I don't know how long I will. <laughs> but anyway, they have to renew me anyway next year. Maybe I'll be gone. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, a bunch of us have to be renewed. So, uh, and and if Marie, if you can't make it, I can. I would definitely, if nobody else wants to, I'll, I'll fill in. So, um, but I, I really think uh, uh, just tonight, you did, I, I didn't see you the last time, but tonight you did a great job, and I think you'd be a great chair for us. So, well, thank you. I remember to do the all in favors. Tyler had to be reminded me last time. So. Anyway, well, thanks for your thanks for your vote of confidence, and uh, I will try my best to do that. And Kevin, you'll have to be my seconder then. Uh, somebody else here that I can call on. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, our new architect now is not from here either. He's in Vancouver, I think. Right. So yeah, it's nice to have people local. Like for, for Charles to do what he did and travel from Victoria uh, to be chair was. was uh, that was just a blessing for us. It was just amazing that he would do that, and and uh, I thought he would just prefer to do his chairing from from Victoria by his vision, and and uh, uh, he did a brilliant job. And it's it's too bad he wasn't here so we can send him off. Hopefully we can have a right. a Christmas dinner, or whatever, or go to the Sarahs like we normally do. We should probably mm -hmm. um, we're still on we're still on air, so. Uh, we should probably actually adjourn the meeting if we want to. So, through to the chair. I, guess I would like to ask one question. Oh, I've um, got a question here. Is this an actual motion number one? And would we like to wait until we have Jason Santaford with us on December 9th to have him a part of this vote as well? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if you guys could hear that, um, but. Uh, Lori. Lori. I would make a motion that. that uh, 
we asked Marie to chair the next meeting, and at the next meeting, we appoint a new chair. Okay. That, does that make sense? So there's a motion on the table. Does somebody has to chair the next meeting. Okay, so that's a good idea, and uh, we have a seconder for that motion. Okay, all in favor? <laughs> okay, shall we adjourn the meeting? <laughs> Okay. Let's let everybody go home. But thank you very much, guys. Good job. Thank you, guys. See you thank next you. time. Have a good evening. Hey, okay, everyone. Thanks. Hey, did you want to say something? No? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are we off air? I don't know. Just, just, just wait. Just wait.